My name is Mohammed Al Khatib. As a prelude, I took the name of Amy Kat later on in my life. I am of Arab origin. In fact, quarter Sharkas said it's a nomad, and half Syrian, half Turkish. That's my origin. We come from the Arabs of Andalus. I was born in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, at that point, I grew up in Saudi Arabia until age six or seven. Um, and at that time, there was no schools in Saudi Arabia. And uh, we had to uh, be sent over to Lebanon to seek uh, uh, good education. In the vacations, we'd come back to join our families in Saudi Arabia. So there was a mix of uh, upbringing as far as territories are concerned, until the civil war had started. And then thereon, after the civil war, we were sent to England to continue our education. My father is a very keen amateur, and he had all the good equipment in a little closet in the living room. And so I was always fascinated because he used to want to always take pictures of us. And uh, he used to line us up and put us in front of the camera, cheese and all that stuff. And I just fascinated me. How come this box that he has in his hand makes these pictures? By the age of 12, I started being very curious as to go into his private closet. And that was a big no-no. One day he caught me. And I thought I was going to get really uh, slammed with it. And I, I was surprised. On the contrary, he gave me one camera and told me, you could try. I will teach you how to put a film in it and try. But as long as you keep it at home. And you try at home only. And that was it, the start of my photography. By trial and error. But later on, when I was at school at the age of 14, I joined the photo club. And so when all the students used to take gate passes to go to the cinema, I used to take the key of the labo so I can go and uh, work with my prints and print and develop film. And that's how it started, really. At that time, today, things have changed. But at that time, when you say, I'm going to become a photographer, or an artist even, Things were looked at a bit negatively by parents and families. And so I, I wanted to do uh, landscape architecture. So it's close to art a little bit. Uh, and I failed my chemistry big times in, in England on the A-levels. So, uh, so I veered into economics and industrialism. And I became an industrial consultant. At this point, my father passed away. And when he passed away, I realized that I'm in Saudi Arabia only for him. And I was next to him because I loved him and I wanted to be with him. But when he went, I was free to make a choice. So I went from an industrial consultant to a person who was looking for himself. I took a ticket, flew to the States, put my finger on the map, literally, and found Iowa being the center. Iowa is a state. And I went to Iowa, and then I met this, this person, this girl, that I fell in love with. And uh, she was a model. She needed pictures. So I started pay taking pictures of her. And uh, the pictures went from an agent in Iowa to an agent in New York. And they started questioning who's behind these pictures. And they wanted me to do more. And so I started realizing that this is a, a passion that is developing into something else. So I followed it. And by, uh, by doing so, I realized that this is what I want to do. And this is where my soul belongs, um, where I feel really I'm in my skin. And so I decided to join uh, and expand on my knowledge. And I joined Brooks Institute of Photography in Santa Barbara. And I liked the fashion industry. It was dynamic. It was a good experience. And my base was New York. And then I was, I've gone to London. Uh, to work the editorial scenes. Uh, and then I went to France to also pick up on the editorial scenes to bring back to my agent in New York. But I fell in love with Paris, and I never went back. 
and I bought my studio in Paris, so I have my studio here. And then later on in life, I wanted to explore other dimensions, and so I went and, uh, and explored Dubai, and I wanted to come back closer to my roots. 2003, we started smelling art in Dubai. 2005, it started picking up, and it was my chance to jump on that. Uh, and I did try, and I entered that arena. I find it a lot more interesting, more satisfying to the soul, because you're doing things with a meaning, where you really start feeling that you're doing something that you're happy with, that you love, and in the same time, it's very beneficial to a lot of people without the commercial value. The Everlasting Now is a uh, project about our heritage, our, our Hejaz heritage uh, in, in specific. Jeddah was a port, and it was a very important point of Hejaz. Um, I was born in Jeddah, and I have a sentimental and an emotional tie with it. And so, amongst the time, uh, the heritage has been abandoned, unfortunately, for about 40 years. So the, it was uh, really uh, touching me to see it falling apart. And it was a very sad moment for me to look at it falling apart. So I've decided to do this project for two reasons, two main reasons. The first reason, being a capable photographer, I wanted to capture and preserve the heritage, but using a contemporary platform. So it is a documentation, it is not a documentary. The second most important part is, is it carries a message, and a message for awareness. It's how it started, um, is of course with the collaboration of that wonderful man, uh, Hamza Serafi. Um, I was in a hotel, and I would take a taxi and I would drive down to the city. And then I realized that it's not working this. Something is missing. Uh, so we've decided that I would live in that old space. So I did live for about three, four months in that old space. And mixed with the social fabric that is currently living in that space, which are immigrants. Um, until the city started revealing itself to me. Until the city started showing me its secrets. And uh, I've spent a lot of the time walking and going into structures. They're very dangerous structures. But I can say the most difficult thing was not the danger. It was to capture a particular space or an image and have equal proportions of neglect abandonment and beauty. Sometimes I would spend a whole day in a room, just there, sitting, watching the light, feeling the space, uh, even having lunch there in a very specific room. I've, I knew what I want. I knew what I want. And I was, when I, when I found a space that belongs to the concept, and I could tailor or tie in the concept, I would pick that selecting space. A lot of the spaces are blocked. I have to climb, I have to put ladders. In fact, it is a bit trespassing. But I didn't consider myself a trespasser when the real people had abandoned the heritage and new social fabrics, illegal immigrants, had set in. And so when I come in, I, I find myself not really trespassing, but being part of this evolution of this heritage. We told the story in a multi-layered approach. The first layer was about to erect for you the house of Hejaz. And so you have the grand format that you have two of them in the Biennale. Those are to make you feel, understand, and live the moment again with the house of Hejaz. It's very important, every image has a size. And that particular series, Spaces, that uh, shows you the house of Hejaz, 
are done specifically in the, this big format, which is 234 by 180. Because optically, if you stand in front of one at its optimum distance, which is three times the diagonal line, you literally feel you lived in that house. You feel that space. So those were very important, so the spaces, and then we have intricacies, which are details of the story, and then you have the new, uh, the new uh, for me it was like a breakthrough, uh, it's called mental spaces, they are collage to summarize certain areas in the heritage, to give you the most important points, so to show you the most important, and create one space so you can see it in one glance and understand it in one glance. And that's the purpose of the mental spaces. I started the project studying it, uh, research, uh, the research done on that was in 2005. And in 2014, it was awarded as the World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Uh, throughout these years, I saw, I remarked, and as I also worked in the area, I started seeing more courtesy given to that heritage and the efforts. And today, um, I have been, in fact, honored and given privilege to, uh, by the government of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. They liked the project and they liked the message that it carries to an extent that they would decided to make a solo of part three, which was a great news for me. So yes, I could see that the message had been absorbed and I'm very happy that it had reached even higher levels and lower levels. I do believe aesthetics is important to a certain point. Okay, not as important as the concept, or not as important as the message, but a lot of the art contemporary world uh, today are ignoring a bit the fact of aesthetics. Light is very important in, in photography. In fact, light is important to any living. All the secrets of life are in the light. For this project, it was very important just to use natural light for all the project, uh, regardless. Um, so each space, each area, I visit and revisit and keep visiting until she shows me her best. And this is the time where I'd come back and photograph it. That, that, uh, a lot of the times, uh, also light, is, is important, but also we try to capture the soul of the, of the space, the energy. Souls on the streets, arwah ala shawari. And this project talks about that we are part of a huge cosmic process. Our souls, or you may call it our energy, are traveling through tunnels of time and that whether you are Muslim, Christian or whatever you are, you're a human being and you are part of that cosmic process and we're unified under that, unified. And so we are all going through the same, you know, we go through passages, tunnels of time. I wanted to show that we are all humans. And so to show it, it's 19 pieces because I chose each soul that exist on this planet. I was once in 2003 in Paris, and I was, I remember in the uh, deuxième arrondissement having a coffee, and I see people passing, and I just get the distinction of that tunnels of time, uh, and people sitting, people passing, and I wanted to start working on it, but I never found the space. 2009, I was invited to Marrakesh. I went to Marrakesh for the first time. And then walking in the streets, I realized that this is the lieu that I want because they are a bit 
uh, mysterious with a lot of energy. So I chose five from maybe 150 streets I've seen and they became my studios. Every day I would go to them depending on the light. I remember my first photograph that I took. It's actually uh, when my first by my father, Allah irhamu, God bless his soul, when he gave me that camera, and I remember capturing my brother. I love my brother, and I, I remember that, and he was giving me a piece like that, and it was my first photograph, and I love it. I'm very happy to see art uh, blossoming so much around the world because art is our only hope. To educate with art, we see when we were younger, we got educated too much on the left. And people with the left brain is where logic and time and language and arithmetic is all piled up. And we've not used that much, this, this right brain. And today, uh, even in Saudi Arabia, um, around the world, they're all putting so much effort into the education of art because art would allow people to be a little bit more broader when taking decisions and broader when looking at things and not so narrow-minded that we are suffering from today called extremism. I mean, I love my religion. I'm a Muslim. I'm proud to be a Muslim. I'm proud to be an Arab or of an origin Arab. And it's time to wake up and really grab ourselves and represent ourselves, reinvent ourselves and reposition ourselves is very important and art allows us to make it.